Why, hello. This is the Space Between Podcast, where we talk about the space between life and art, passion and business. What's happening now and what's happening next? I'm Pat Shand. I'm Amy Shand. And we have two guests in the house, but before we introduce them, before, first, I'm going to uh, say what's going on here, okay? Um, YouTube is coming for us. And in fact, I just stopped myself from already breaking the idea there. We're going to try to not curse for the first 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. I almost said YouTube is something coming for us. Oh, no. I, knew you were I almost gonna... messed it up. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I haven't said messed in so long. <laughs> messed? Come on, dude. Plus, we're at mom's house. It's true, it's true, but this mouth flies freely. I know. Okay? It doesn't, yeah. All right, so. It doesn't mean. It's true. It, it doesn't mean. It. Yeah. We, we're going to introduce our guest now, okay? We have, to my, in the video, to my right, we have Dennis A. Allen II. Yes. To, yeah, it's you. Yeah. Yeah, it's to Dennis's it's right, you. we have Tanya Everett. Okay? Now, I've been wanting you both on here for a while. Um, I've known you in my life for some time. Um, you met my wife today for the first time, as my mom would say, Eva. Eva. IRL. But today, I-R-L. In, today's, in today's day and age, I do feel like I know them in a way still through social media and yes. through you. Yes. But I had the lovely blessing of being able to meet them in person like 10 minutes ago. Yes. Or, yeah. Or a bit, you know, today. Yeah, today. It was awesome. Yeah, and I... um. I'm trying to realize, uh, trying to remember, it's been so long since I've seen both of you, mm. and um, we're going to do some yeah. promo here for what you guys have got going on. We're yeah. going to say say what it is, mm-hmm. say how people can get there and how they can support you and push that. Sounds so cool. Mm. But mostly we're here for just a conversation, you know, just to hang out and catch up. Um, I want to talk about how I met each of you mm. and um, why I was gravitated toward you creatively. Mm. And um, I want, as we go along, if you have questions about them, if you have questions about life, if you want to chime in and ask them something like, um, I said last night, something, a topic that could be like, what their thoughts on astral projection could be, that kind of thing, just a- anything, you know, anything. Totally. Um, so Dennis. All right, I'm gonna start with me. All yeah, right. I'm, I'm gonna start, uh, here is how Dennis stood out to me mm-hmm. as the creative um, tour de force, okay, mm-hmm. that he Ooh. is, right? Yep. Um, picture this. Mm-hmm. I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is hilarious to picture, I will be honest. Mm-hmm. Largely looked the same, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. uh, we all do. It, yeah, it, all of us, right? Yeah, all of us <laughs> haven't aged a day. In fact, not a minute. I'm thinking we look a little bit younger right now, right? <laughs> like, um, so, um, creative writing class mm-hmm. at Malloy College. Mm-hmm. Um, I was presenting uh, short works of my own, largely from a fantasy vampire series, okay? Mm. Yes, you um, were. And there was someone else in the classroom. In fact, there was about 12 other people in the classroom. Um, some were clowns, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but one was not okay <laughs> um you uh you, you had a few spoken word pieces that really stood out to me mm-hmm. um and you i'm just gonna say it they, they were kind of sexy okay like you had some um you s- turn him on yeah you know to uh, being your friend was sitting in class True. you know engorged okay and and, oh, and you are. <laughs> I, I wonder if youtube is okay with engorged engorged i think it's okay yeah, yeah, within the good. first 10 minutes is that okay, YouTube? Yeah. Am I allowed Let us know. to be erect? Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> That's worse than engorged. I know we were done. Uh, <laughs> heck, you know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but then, do you remember the day that you switched the game? I do not, but I, I would like to hear about it. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you knew, but there were women in the class who found you very attractive, okay? Uh, 
That's shocking. Not sure if you knew that. Sh- uh, um, not word. sure if you knew, but that's the story of his life. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but then you brought in a piece from the perspective of someone who I believe, if I'm not remembering this wrong, hmm. he um, murdered his mother, and it was written in the first person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dennis. I, I remember that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, dark dark Dennis. Dennis. It was dark, and it was captivating, and it had, like, you started it with, like, the same, like, you uh, wooed the audience with that same sexual bravado, mm. but then That's you genius, turned it into it's this. some Ted Bundy type shit. Yeah. Ex- mm. Exactly. <laughs> It, see, <laughs> Amy would love this piece because she is Very really into this alley. true crime action. Yeah? Uh. Um, and I was I, I was in awe of the way that you were able to play with the tension of the audience, even when the audience is a classroom. Mm. And uh, from that point on, um, we became friends and started to make work together. But yeah, I just want to see if you remember that piece because that it, I remember it so well. It, it stood out to me, you know. Wow. Yeah, I vaguely. I mm-hmm. vaguely remember that piece. Yeah. It, I, as you describe it, I do remember that, but I don't remember the details. Um, you know, I grew up. I mean, before I was verbal um, for entertainment purposes, my mother would was reading Stephen King's The Stand to me just yeah. to keep me entertained, right? Oh and my so, god! And so, you know, what I mean, like Stephen King, Dean Koontz, horror has always been like something that's always been something yeah. into me and then my mother is, is an avid mystery reader and mm. she watches all the like the all the crime true crime stuff like mm. she's just into that so that's always been kind of like a part of my life in terms yeah. of creatively where I started mm. um, I was trying to force myself to read Stephen King stuff even though it was beyond me yes. um, and so I always thought about maybe being like a horror writer or what mm. you know being scared was something that you know hit the adrenaline in the right way yeah Mm. um and it wasn't until i became like self-aware and like started taking english classes where people started like judging where i started going oh i don't want people to think i'm crazy so let me like Mm. veer off okay you start thinking about you start thinking about how people view like no no no, that's not that's not me that's just the world i want to create right right and and making that separation and so it's true because i have read true crime stuff where it's like people they'll find like evidence of something and th- and then they'll swear like oh no 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 that's just a fictional story it's just mm. a fictional story mm-hmm. when it's not mm. but at mm-hmm. the same time there are people that are just that creative mm. that right. go there in their minds mm-hmm. and would never in real life but they just find that interesting mm-hmm. you know so mm-hmm. it's hard to like really uh, draw that line you never know um, but by the time I got to our class creative I, I stopped giving a first 10 minutes hey and so, <laughs> It, that, right. I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm not gonna come out of me. I stopped giving the first ten minutes. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I stopped giving the first ten minutes. First ten minutes, this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that's why I was comfortable sharing that piece, whatever that piece was. That yeah, yeah, yeah you remember so clearly. So yeah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. Oh, of course, know. yeah. If I could ever find that, it's probably lost in a mm. dead computer somewhere. But. Yeah, if you could ever remind find that piece come back on this podcast and we'll just read it it. 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 yeah that'll be fun Mm. and you tanya Mm. um i I met you through such an interesting i'm not sure if i can say it's the it was the shh let's talk about sex festival Mm. okay that's that's sex is not a bad word no 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 i mean i don't think it is no, it's like a scientific okay. word. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> because we've gotten demonetized for some You're sexy scared. things before. You are scared. But, Go on. Uh, but no, um, uh, it was Kimberlyn Crawford's mm-hmm. Shh, Let's Talk About Sex Festival. Mm. Um, I wrote a play called Soft Serve mm. um, that was about exploding boners. <laughs> that's uh, what it was about. Oh my god! I mean, that's like I the twist at the end, you know. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, you, 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 and um, our mutual friend Clinton mm-hmm. Lowe were bards, mm-hmm. telling the story of this young man's uh, medical journey, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. As he tried to solve, um, he would always go to parties and he'd, he'd have whiskey dick. And he always treated women very poorly. It, it, it was a parable, okay? It was. And it ended uh, with his dick exploding, right? <laughs> B- because of these um, nasty pills, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and you, oh, I said I said a word. It's okay, though. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Fine, it's mm-hmm. fine. It's okay. It's yeah. a name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, all right, so. 
you were in the play, mm -hmm. and then um, we began to work together on different things, you know, and yeah. um, our circles began to overlap yeah. as uh, uh, Dennis, you were working um, pretty much every role on one of the films that we were producing. Mm -hmm. um, you, you were an actor, you probably held the boom mic and the camera, you, you like helped me with it's the schedule, like everything, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and Tanya, you were cast as one of, quote, the dudes. I was one of the dudes. Named t -Bac. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, talent. Um, and then you and I... Stretch. Yeah. You are a writer now, though, too. You know, you uh, you started out as an actor. And that's actually true of both of you. You yeah. both act, write, and do you d direct as well? I haven't directed, but I, I want to. Yeah. 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 You are... Uh, you and I worked on a play together called Game Face. We did. Yeah. yeah. And that was, if I'm wrong, tell me, but that was your first produced writing, right? Like, that was your first reading um, of I, a writing? I think, I mean, I had a, some smaller things. Yeah. But it was the first time that I had, like, a full-length piece. That is wild. Yeah. That's so cool <laughs> to look back on, too, because yeah. I, I remember that play so fondly. Yeah. And it was such a cool cast, and I remember developing it with you. And... Yeah, now to see you two working together. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you've been friends ever since then, too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, We met right here. That's <laughs> so awesome to me, you know? That's it, cool. We're podcasting in the room that they met. We're in podcasting the where, it happened. where it all Ooh. began, yeah. okay? Hamilton Come on. You're welcome. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. In the room where it happened. Oh, room where it happened. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, can you tell me a bit about... Um, and you can both speak to this too about what the journey of a uh, of actor to writer was, or how each skill informs the other. Uh, yeah, it's a it's an ongoing journey. I think um, I I often tell actors that um, I believe that they're all writers. So I did this Meisner program like um, a few years ago, and and so much of it is like telling yourself a story to like get to a certain effect or or something that you need in a scene uh, and so you are kind of like writing these little moments but like actors don't think of themselves as writers a lot of time right. and uh, so one of the things that I feel like I'm always doing is seeing the story from like both angles right so like yes. being inside of it but mm -hmm. also like jumping outside of it and and navigating both of those um, spaces um, there's a really good book um, Alan Ball backwards and forwards um, and it talks about the structure of plays and it talks Alan about Ball from 60 and under uh, different Alan Ball oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just Alan Ball though I love he wrote yeah, a yeah. book that when was incredible it. Yeah. that was also incredible so mm -hmm. I, and yeah I think it's a different Alan Ball um, so it, it talks about like looking at the play backwards right okay. and just like looking at how each piece fits into the other piece um, so I think that like when I'm inside of it, I'm looking at my own track, right? Like I'm looking yeah. at like who I I need to be and who yeah. I interact with. Yeah. But like when I'm outside of it, I'm looking at everybody's track, right? Like yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, um, how the thing affects the audience. I'm I'm in different spaces, you yes. know. Um, and so I I'm navigating all of those different like lenses is mm. really interesting. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm excited by it. Uh, in the play that we're working on, um, I plan to act in. So for right now, I'm in the writer's seat, the audience seat. Um, so the next time, I won't be able to see it. <laughs> I'll just be inside of it. Then. Wait, hold on. It'll be crazy. So <laughs> you're, you're going to be acting in the same play? Um, so I'm working on the workshopping it so that I can act in it. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so. awesome. I that can't wait awesome. to see it. Yeah. It's going to be so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, it's interesting that, that they hear you ask that question. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's a good question. if I really track it, I've always, I mean, I've always thought about myself as being a writer, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but I've always been in situations where I was performing, mm -hmm. um, whether it was like choir or mm -hmm. marching band or, right. you know, school play mm -hmm. or I've always put myself in positions. Mm -hmm. And I think the separation of the arts is a very Western concept. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, even like if you think about certain African cultures, there's no separation between the word music and dancing. Yeah. The, the concept of that being separate is not a, it's not a, there's no word wow. for that. Okay. Right? It's just, yeah. it's just all together. You yeah. Know? And so I think, you know, once you add capitalism and, mm. and, and Ooh. patriarchy and heteropatriarchy and you add all the things, right. Um, then you start separating and saying only you can, you can only do this one thing. You mm -hmm. can only do that. Because, what are you like, focused on? You have on, to be right? able to narrow it down in order to like put, uh, like a 
money value mm-hmm. on it. Like mm-hmm. that's you can get a job. You can't get a job being a music. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You get a mm-hmm. job. Yeah. Speaking of like the African term, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's true. It's like mm-hmm. all one entity. Mm-hmm. All of those things make you feel one thing. Yeah. But in order to like title it and be able to put like a career title on it you can't do that you have to be a dancer you have to be a singer Mm -hmm. you have to be a person that makes the beat Mm -hmm. one of like you have to separate it all in order to like make those paychecks essentially and Mm -hmm. that's exactly what you're saying is like once patriarchy and government and business business gets into it that's when all the titles have to start coming because Mm -hmm. that that's how you like place your money and that's what it's all about yeah. in and the if end. you really think about if you think about your favorite artists they're not one thing mm-hmm. yeah. they do multiple that's all true wear multiple oh, like hats. there's nobody yeah. that just mm-hmm. does one yeah. thing that's yeah. not a human being trait it's mm-hmm. just i'm just this one that's not real mm-hmm. um and even when they do specialize in this one thing then they go oh i want to branch out into this because i've always been interested or this is the thing that scares me or this is you know what i'm saying and that's so, very true so uh, you know so it's a it's a it's a mindset that's you know that we we've convinced ourselves that people are just one thing but yeah. nobody's just one thing in yeah. any spectrum yeah i had a, uh, uh, a friend uh, a while ago she was a, a model and an actor but she was afraid to tell people that she was a makeup artist mm-hmm. and i was like i don't understand that you know but she was like if i go on sets mm-hmm. and people know that i do makeup then all of a sudden i'm a makeup artist yes. and so then i'm in a different mm-hmm. category of humans that is and that straight is very facts. limiting That's true. right mm-hmm. but it's very yep. limiting as a financial model like yeah. there are so many models and so mm-hmm. few makeup artists mm-hmm. like to be able to mo- to be able to um, navigate both of those spaces to me it seems should be a plus mm-hmm. right should be a plus mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i mean yeah. i i know people in comics who do smaller roles under different names because mm. they don't want to be known as yeah. that kind of role. And not only that, mm. like, yeah. mm. that reminds me of you at Zenoscope. Like, you are, since you were born, a writer. Yeah. But when you got to, get to Zenoscope, they learned and saw that you could edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, mm. like, you were really good with, you know, uh, like, I guess editing other people's stuff and making sure everything was all together mm. and that it, it is even more places. rare than someone who's like, oh, a writer, yeah. Yeah. that they needed that from you and they turned you into an editor slash writer. That's true. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly like the makeup artist thing. It's like mm. not a lot of people could do the editing like you could, but so many people are willing to try at least to do the writing part. Sure. Oh, that's a fact. And mm. I mean, to speak on, uh, on that blending of roles and blending mm-hmm. of creativity, I, honestly, I never felt uh, the pull to act more than when I was writing plays, specifically. Mm-hmm. I, I, I remember mm-hmm. um, I've gone with both of you to stage readings of both your stuff, my own stuff, mm-hmm. and just seeing that process there is, um, I mean, and you've done live theater too, you know? Th- th- there's and such that's a the difference life to with it. me is like, Ever since I was in high school and middle school, I love to be, to have a script and to, like, help someone. I love collaboration. Like, Mm -hmm. I love to be the actress that, like, brings whatever they wrote to life. And, like, I like that, that narrow path of, like, what you were saying. I'm just not, I haven't experienced or been able, like, I've written, like, short stories and stuff in comics. Mm -hmm. But I really love the actress part, actor part of it where you just, like, Mm -hmm really get into that and then you like the person that wrote it who wanted that and needed that you were able to give that to them yeah. so that's why like i love like disney and stuff like that like when i was like dorothy i was dorothy mm. like mm-hmm. in, as a senior so mm. i like that too yeah. Yeah. but other people can do the both of them like switch mm-hmm. back yeah. and forth you know mm-hmm. and write it and either have someone do it or be able to do it themselves mm-hmm. is really cool it's it's true and and, and there's such such a life to it. I mean, mm-hmm. I miss this feeling because I, I used to write plays way more than I mm-hmm. do now. I mean, like, I always have my goal as in get back into theater this year because mm-hmm. there's such a rewarding feeling. I mean, right now you're, you're workshopping your play, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the the feeling of workshopping it and going over lines to get right and then when it goes live to be in the audience as they react to a positive change that you made mm-hmm. yo mm-hmm. <laughs> it's 10 minutes now right and, uh, is it, has it's it been 20. 10 minutes oh yeah yeah, yeah. get the fuck out of here because that <laughs> feeling feels so good that's so good so good um <laughs> uh, I, I broke the seal it's true uh <laughs> So right now you're workshopping a play called A and B. Yes. And that's B E A. A. The name. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Now, um, 
Yeah, tell me a, a bit about the play. You know, I know it's part of the uh, the festival has a wild name. It does have a wild name. Yeah, yes, it's, uh, it's yeah. A something and a pint of your what own is blood. It? What is it? Bring a weasel. Bring a, a weasel and a pint of your own blood. And a pint of your own blood. And where is that? Why? Why? Festival. Oh, it's at the Public Theater in New York. <laughs> in New York City. We should mm-hmm. go. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I haven't written yeah. that whole day. Where, I'm, I'm, where, I'm the, go, yeah. where Hamilton and all kinds of other mm. little little tiny no name um, plays are made. <laughs> I'm excited for it. I'm excited <laughs> so for it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, cool. So. so Bring your bring a weasel. Bring a weasel and a pint of your own blood. It's a mac- is that like a and medieval? So, well, I think uh, I, it's, it's our, been our it's program. been running. Yeah, it's been <laughs> running for I don't know, fifteen years. So we went now? to Brooklyn College. Okay. He, he went um, before before I did. I just mm-hmm. graduated this year. Yes. Brooklyn College Congrats. is a very thank you. Um, I graduated in May, and uh, the the program is very experimental and a little bit like. Mm-hmm. Uh, the avant garde and yeah. weirdo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, so, the, and, and so yeah. the basic premise of, of it, uh, Mac Wellman, who was the head of the program, basically felt like playwrights should know what it's like to produce. Yeah. They, should, they should know that side of the, of, of, of the coin. And so the playwrights uh, in the MFA program would be producers for other playwrights' plays. And if you were a producer that one year, then the second year your play would be produced hey. by the playwrights, okay. right? And yep. so that yep. and so that you would get the language. So that's where it started. Cool. Um, the actual name, I'm not sure, but because it's such an experimental thing, yeah. just some no crazy asks. artist, just yes. you know what I mean? Yeah. Decided, <laughs> that's what we're gonna call it, and that's what it is. Like a Rocky Horror yeah. Picture Show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you just call I'm picturing like who pitched that, sure. you know? Mm-hmm. The Weasel Festival. Like, the Weasel Festival. The Weasel Festival. Hey. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And your play is. A and B, and yeah, talk talk a bit about like how is it a full length? Is it a ten minute? Like what? How? Just tell us as much as you can without giving it away for those who want to see. Because listen, this is New York, okay? We have a New York audience too. Okay, you know, a large percentage of the little graph I see. I see you in New York, all right? <laughs> so is it you outdoor come or indoor? The festival. Indoor. That's so such a California yeah. question. To uh, ask. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> it's true. Because there would be it's like true. Shakespeare festivals in the summertime yeah. at the ballpark mm-hmm. and like outdoor theaters. Yeah, and, totally. I don't know, it's and the public does Shakespeare in the, the park. Bu- yeah. It's true. At the Delacorte so in the yeah. Central Park. Yeah. I, I will say it's okay. That's a real question and a good. It is. Question. Yeah. It is. <laughs> but but like, maybe also your, a is your high school outdoor or indoor? Yeah. That's a that's a California question. Is the bathroom indoor or outdoor? Exactly. Only one of us went to school barefoot. Okay. Uh, I, that's, uh, all. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he's still, I don't like shoes. I have like shoes are so shoes, and they both like both my pairs of shoes together cost like less than forty dollars. Yep. So I you hate know shoes. what? Yep. Me, me too. <laughs> same. Same. So. Uh, so it is a one act. Uh, it's a one act festival. So each of the one acts have different um, time frames. Mine's an hour. Nice. Um, and Damn. Uh, yeah, it's an hour. So I'm wow. And I'm workshopping it to get get it to be an hour and a half, so it could be a okay. full length play. Yeah. Um, say so three hander. Um, it's uh, A and B have been partners for twenty years, um, and uh, at the beginning of the play, um, B has passed away. Um, so we are. Uh, piecing together their lives together and uh, it's a memory play so it comes um, back and forth in time and uh, so we we have a lot of shifts we have a lot of um, um, maybe a little bit of magical realism I think Mm -hmm. to it and um, a a deeply personal play for me Uh, you know I I have never lost a partner but I have um, experienced a lot of loss over the last couple of years and so I was channeling a lot of that grief and and the ways in which grief um, changes you and creates like a new person. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, just to share this, uh, today is the four year anniversary of um, the passing of my mom. Um, yeah. So uh, that Thanks is. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so just, you know, the highs and lows of that particular mm-hmm. year were, were interesting because I yeah. got my first New York Times review that year. I was starring in a show and, and uh, in the park. I was um, starring in the Classical Theater Harlem's um, The Tempest. Mm-hmm. And then the show closed and my mom passed a week later. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's just been it's been that it's been like being in theater and being in this like very, uh, uh, you know, tumultuous space. And it's based on a bar um, that actually Dennis visited me at. Um, it's a bar on the Lower East Side um, that no longer exists. Uh, the, the owner passed away. Um, but it's, it's this dive bar that like NYU kids would come dance at. And it was like very kind of seedy, but also very popular. Yeah. And I bartended and waitress there for like 
on and off for like a decade. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so shout out to that place because nice. now we have a real bar. Like there's like a 12 foot bar uh, in this stage. Uh, for real? Yeah, and there's projections and and mm -hmm. like lights and the whole thing. Like it's a fully staged wow. thing. Wow, I really want to see this. That's yeah. Awesome. So yeah, yeah. yeah. that <laughs> sounds awesome. Excited. It's a thing. It's a real yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a real thing. <laughs> like the bar is. Is really real. Like that you can is wild. Sit I mean, at it. <laughs> that stuff is always so hard to figure out for me too. I remember, I, I, in fact, I remember back when you were staging um, the mud is thicker in Mississippi. You know, mm -hmm. I would always wonder how that was going to look. Mm -hmm. And the like, just both of you have been so creative in the way that you pull those kind of things off. You know, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, you know, you bring up like the highs and lows, and that's really an interesting topic because I mean, my dad died last year, yeah, and. Sorry. It's, it's just for a while, it's it's weird to have that m spike of happiness when something positive does happen in your career. Yeah. Because the truth is, I mean, as creatives, I mean, we kind of never stop. And in fact, yeah. so sometimes, I mean, per personally, grief does often fuel what I do, you know, yeah. and it, it shows up in my work. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I just put out Destiny Eater Volume 3, and Yay. that is a product of some of that specific grief. Yeah. And, and to hear good thoughts about it and other mm. people being happy about what what that work is ma makes me feel kind of strange but good at, at the same time yeah. so that that re really speaks to me that, that you said that you know yeah and that also too what you said um reminds me of like pat's mom about like mm. how grief and loss changes you and turns you into like sort of a different person like yeah. coming up anew because we've seen that in his mom in sure. the last year like it's crazy she's just made a transformation she's she's not she's the same but she's different yeah you know, so yeah it, it becomes part of who you are mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. um yeah and yeah dennis how, how what spoke to you about this play i mean i know that you you've collaborated and been friends through through many plays um but mm -hmm. for he's you read to take everything. on the director role, he's you literally know? read everything i've been around for everything he's yeah, read. I, have. I mean there might be like some little 10 minute situation that he hasn't mm -hmm. read but yeah. probably he's read <laughs> yeah um i mean you know tanya and i are friends um and we've been close for a while um so i I've, I've literally been able to see her creative journey um Ooh, from, you will make me emotional i'm not gonna yeah. cry on this podcast no 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 <laughs> um and you know it's been a it's been a beautiful journey and it's you know it's been a painful journey and, and it, it's been life um and i've been blessed enough to experience that life with her yeah. and so you know um she was, you know, she was determined on getting into a master's program for playwriting. Mm. Um, and so I had already graduated from Brooklyn College. Um, and I was also on the committee that read the plays for the next That's why you have people coming in. Friends in um, the right place. Yeah. So um, <laughs> as soon as her name popped up when she said she was going to apply, I, I made sure that I gave my recommendation. I said, keep yeah, a, keep an eye out, you know. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it's perfect. And you, you wouldn't know. do that if she wasn't worth it, you know. Exactly. you don't want to put any bad, right. you know, vibes it, on your name. Exactly. But exactly. you knew it. So mm -hmm. you're like, oh, she's good. So. And I, yeah, and I work hard to build those relationships. Exactly. Um, and, and to have integrity in everything I do artistically. And mm -hmm. so I only promote the people that I know have mm -hmm. the same artistic integrity that I have. Yeah. Totally. Um, and so, and people know that. So when I tell you that this person is up and coming or this person is the one, you're like, okay, Dennis, mm -hmm. Dennis no likes them. There's no that. other reason mm -hmm. for that. And, and so I knew she would get in just on, she didn't need me, but I made sure the, to she push saw. her. Yeah, I made sure yeah. that she was. Um, and so we come full circle. I, I graduated and actually interestingly enough, I had, um, I had a play in the Weasel Festival. So I was a producer then I had a play in the Weasel Festival yeah. that went up. Um, and it was a play that um, looked at uh, minstrelsy um, and the history of minstrelsy. It was so in good. Theater. I saw it. It was um, really good. And uh, you know, it shook up. It shook up some things. Yeah. Um, it yep. kind of changed the game for the Weasel Festival. And actually, mm -hmm. Oscar Eustace, who is Oscar the head Eustace of the was public, in the, yep, was in the sure audience was. because his daughter was in one of the plays. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And so, come full. I remember, like Dennis. I was like, Dennis is doing things. <laughs> <laughs> what um, is happening? Are we friends? But we friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we better stay friends. Because he's going yeah. <laughs> and so Tanya just graduated. Yeah. She has her MFA. Um, she's in the Weasel Festival. So when she asked me to direct my play, I was like, of course. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? It's a full circle moment for of me. Of course. Um, Got it. You know, the, it's my alma mater. It's my it's my it's one of my closest friends. Um, it just happened to be the public and 
they didn't have this relationship when I was there. I, but, yeah. Ooh, you know, the public They don't even Brooklyn know if they're going to continue to right. have it. So, but right yeah. now, Brooklyn yeah. College and the public have a relationship. Yeah. And so they have this money that they're, you know, sending out for students and an educational grant. Yeah. Um, and so I jumped on it. Um, and the play, this play, I think, um, as Tanya said, is the most personal of hers that I've read, read, read. Red? Mm -hmm. Red? Yeah. Word. Red. Yeah. <laughs> sure. that, I re that I fucking read. Hey! Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So much yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. And, uh, well, talking about YouTube. Yeah. God uh, damn. Are you monetize these nuts. Okay, Let's so go. Man. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so in all seriousness, though, that um, this, you know, this play really spoke to me. And, um, you know, the journey of grief. Um, you know, we've all had major losses in our lives. And so I knew this is a story that one, she could tell if no one else um, because of her journey the last four years. Um, and, and also it was just, you know, I'm interestingly enough, I don't know why this has been, but the last few pr projects and everything that's been produced that I've been a director on has been an all female cast. Mm. Um, we have a story about there's that, though. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's a it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Why it's it why it's you know. But it's not like you went out. No, I didn't go out. It, yeah, it's looking for that. That's right. just the yeah. way it's been, and I think the, the way that her play started had male characters, and I was just mm -hmm. like when I first read it, I was just like, yeah, you don't need the guys. It's not really necessary. Mm -mm. For the story. That's not what the story is. Yeah, that is so, you know, this is that's so <laughs> playwriting, man. It was such yeah. a good dramaturgical also, note, though. I was yeah. like, and we're done. We're good. Absolutely. It's true because like. When it comes to equality and stuff, you don't, you shouldn't really have to like try. You shouldn't see like, mm. oh, there's too many girls, so we have to put these guys in yeah. here just to make mm. it equal mm. in a way. Like, if it works, it works. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. this is also the story um, that we were telling. Like, right. it, initially, I think um, it kind of had like a stop kiss feel mm -hmm. to it, where there was like a um, kind of a hate crime, um, and the hate crime felt to me put on. You mm. know, it was almost mm. like. I wasn't quite sure how to fit it in, you know? So there was like a stranger. And how did it come about, like in the first place? Um, just just for the sake of storytelling, really? I, oh wait, wait the, the, like the, the hate scene? crime? Yeah. yeah, I think the hate crime came about because I, I needed a way to um, have the, the partner die, right? Okay, and so gotcha. I was initially like, all right, she dies because, you know, some and stranger. Right, and they're and they're in a bar, and strange, weird things happen in bars, and yeah. also we have this gun moment where you know, not that it's a moment, but we're hearing a lot about like you know gun violence and and how it's affecting us. So I really wanted to make sort of a commentary on that, yeah. um, mm. and then I think it just became more about the the intimacy of them, uh, and death is a is a part of that, it's a fabric of that, but not something I need to comment on, you know. And I'm also yes. really pushing up against these plays that try to like have this like agenda yeah. you know I, I i don't not interested in the agenda mm. you know it's going to be about, about life decision right. that you made yeah. to mm. like look at it from an outside perspective and think mm. like what's the story that i'm really trying to tell yeah. and is there anything like frivolous about it yeah in mm. a way yeah i agree that's it's hard to do as a it writer is. you know it, it's hard to pull out something that that's part of the DNA of what birthed the play, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that, I mean, no one gives notes more vicious than a playwright, another playwright, you know? Ooh, and I, I mean, let me tell you something, the, the notes that I got during stage readings, <laughs> I, at first, I always think, nah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't do that. I mean, that's that's part of the whole thing. If we take right. this out, how yeah. does this happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's always a more simple way to do it. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. since playwriting, I said before it feels so alive. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's almost like a thing where you have to leave the ego at the door and just Ooh. really hear because people Ooh. are seeing it as it's going to be. And if, if they're spotting flaws, they're just catching them early on. You know? Sure. And I mean, mm -hmm. I, I've often written things. I mean, now it, in comics, it's so deadline based mm -hmm. that sometimes mm -hmm. um, it's just so quick that after a project is done, I'll be like, think you know what if that was a play this issue wouldn't be in here like this mm. part right here it wouldn't have happened yeah. because i would have been able to talk it out a lot yeah more. Mm. sure 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 yeah it's mm. um and plus just you know seeing things live like seeing a play live doesn't even mean that uh, the final draft of that play ever. definitely you know, not. that's yeah. that's something that's so unique to this form yeah. and uh yeah. yeah it's i mean i think that 
I feel similar to comics too that people people don't read comics enough and, t- and take it seriously enough and people don't go and see live theater enough either yeah. you know it's um people often like go to see some Broadway shows yeah. but I do often hunger to see off off Broadway just yeah. like mm-hmm. just creative stories that mm-hmm. are going to be there and gone and th- and there's a sadness in that too like yeah. I mean I let me tell you something I would love a collection of each of your plays just to watch that on Netflix, you know, just, or DVDs, just to be able to go on YouTube and, put it out there. and, and, and just watch. Are you listening to YouTube? I know. Yes, it's We're seriously. available, right? And yeah. also yeah. Audible, like. Seriously, yeah. Just, it's do you guys, beautiful like, work. Do you guys ever go, because you guys are so, like, in the theater scene, like, you're writing and you're mm. acting and things like that, do you guys ever, like, for, with your partner, like, with your wife and stuff, ever see a something like a live theater production that has nothing to do with you guys and like ever go and see it just just for fun how oh, often do you guys do watch that? theater for fun that's a good question yeah, yeah. That, that's, you know we go to yeah. theater for fun do i think you? so i go to theater for fun no. i mean i, I mean i would just I mean, think I, that the reason you don't because you don't have the time you know well like, there's time and, and there's there's money yeah and, and right uh-huh. and so you know the the other part of the sad thing about theater and the capitalistic part ba, ba, um, ba, 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 ba. you know luckily i have i have connections with where I'll, I can get discount codes or I, get free I can tickets get free tickets. Yeah, I get yeah. free. If, but if I'm yeah. not getting free tickets, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna miss I don't know it. if I'm I have a hundred dollars, right. hundred thirty-five dollars to yeah. spend. Where like Pat will look online and see like, oh, we want to see this. Mm. You know, uh-huh. we see this we'll in the future mm-hmm. though, like we play in the future. But exactly, yeah. but you guys are very like in in wrapped it. up mm-hmm. in it, right. so yeah. it must be harder to look outside of like your actual theater community and try and go maybe see like something quote unquote random. Yo, you know? yeah, that that's a good question too, because mm. it, it, we it saw sucks. the office music. Yeah, we did, we did. Yeah, oh. yeah. And that's like random. Yeah, it was like the office parody know? musical. Yeah, parody mm-hmm. musical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I saw I'm it from like, it. Yeah. And if you guys ever maybe do that, like. Yeah, I think we do support our community a lot, and it yeah. can be hard to to like get to the community stuff first, you know, like, yes. and, and, you know, I just, I just ran into James Jorsling, um, do you know James? Um, he's got a play opening up at MCC, and I was just like, I would not have heard about this if I hadn't run into you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, or maybe I would have, but, like, oftentimes you, you almost yeah. miss because there's so much going on, mm-hmm. you know? So, totally. so now, I, which is really cool, like, there are enough artists of color doing enough things, like, Nambi Kelly has, you know, which I want to hear Native about. Sun. Native mm-hmm. Sun. And, mm-hmm. you know, all these beautiful things happening. So, yeah, it can be hard to just get to the stuff that your friends are doing. Yeah. Like, I'm promoting the, the hell out of this play, and I'm like, it's four nights. You know, it's four yeah, nights. Right. And they're just people that are just not going to make it and not going to harass them, you know? So uh, being mm-hmm. able to yeah, do do the first circle first and mm-hmm. then if the inner you can of, like, yeah. your actual people you want to totally. support personally yeah, yeah. and yeah. then and then it's like there's something like I just saw um what the constitution means to me um and it's about to close in two weeks and you know it's uh, huh I wanted to see that yeah it, I think it's a really um we'll talk mm-hmm. um you know and, and I think it's a really important piece um but also just uh, topical and it went from New York Theater Workshop to the, to Broadway, yeah. um, you know. So 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 things like that where you're like, all right. I, I had a friend who was just like, you have to see this, and so he got me a ticket. Mm. Um, you know, there mm. there are there are moments in theater that I think you know, like Hamilton, or mm-hmm. you know, that Hamilton's gonna be on forever, right? So you could see that when I hope eventually we um, can see that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, I listen know. to the. Um, music on it. Yeah, oh, yeah. The the, I know yeah. all the music and yeah. like Kevin's seen it. Play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the next thing that's coming out for him though is um Freestyle Supreme. Um he's got uh, Lynn Manuel is coming out with a, a his freestyle show. Um nice. it's going to be on it's a limited run. Well, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It opens he's up in September. Genius. Yeah, he, yes. he's working on a lot of TV stuff now too, He's right? doing he's it. Here. He's going to get that he got. He's going to go for it. Go for it. Yeah, so to answer your question, it can be really hard to see anything. But try to see things that like are in it, at least impactful in the moment, right? And I right. think, and and potentially like pushing the envelope and and the family. I think yeah. also, I mean, for, uh, for me, like if I'm gonna spend my money, it's gonna be on the people that I'm supporting. Totally. Um, especially yeah. since when you're and and you can speak to this as a as a comic book god. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, when oh, you're, thank you, thank you. you know, when, when you're, <laughs> he leans back. When He's you're like, part of when god. you're a part of the community and you do the thing then you see all the moves, yes. right? And so it's harder to enjoy stuff as a 
layman who could just sit back and not think about everything mm -hmm. that goes into it. Oh my God. Like, oh, I see, I see where you're going. Like, a lot of yep. plays, I see where they're going. Yeah. I know, I know what's coming up. Yeah. I can predict everything. Same thing it's with movies. It's not actually interesting. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's hard to see anything yeah. that if I if I'm gonna spend my money, I don't want to spend my money and be disappointed. Because like no, you know what I'm saying? no offense or whatever, but you're not like a regular audience member. Right. Yeah. You're part yeah. of. The it's like an architect would walk into this room exactly. and see it way different than I would see it. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, it's like you that's exactly break it down. what it is. But that's why <laughs> I try to go. Like, sometimes I try to go. You know what? La mm. Last year I went all the time. It was my first year of grad school. And yeah. I went to 50, over 50, 50 <laughs> plays. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I went to 50 plays because I wanted to see everything. Mm -hmm. you know? and then this 50, year, you said? 50, 50 yeah. 50? Uh, upwards of 50. Yeah, I kept, a, I kept a, <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, 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 it was really Damn. crazy. I mean, but I got a lot of free tickets. But, you know, 50. still 50, right? Um, and then, like, maybe 10 movies, you know? So, um, in that year, I got to see like the worst thing I've ever seen, yes. right? Yeah. And and also like some moving stuff, mostly not memorable. No. Um, you know, no offense to the 50, 50 no. things that I saw. Uh, but what what I the, as the architect, right? Mm -hmm. I got to look at how storytelling st storytelling was like being done. You know, mm -hmm. like both from you know a Shakespearean play to like a yeah. brand new work. You know, um, so I so I think that you kind of expand and retract. Like this year gotcha. has much been about has been less about going to see other people's work and more about like my internal mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and observing mm -hmm. the world around me and the architecture of storytelling on a subway train, yeah. you know, and being really mm -hmm. present in the world. Um, so I think you have to kind of navigate that. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's definitely a mix of observing versus reflecting, yeah. but 50? <laughs> yeah. That's I so, I mean. I kept a list. <laughs> that, that, that makes me a little bit jealous because the, the stuff that you would learn, I mean, yeah. I, I, I used to teach um my my textbook for my creative writing class was um how not to write a screenplay Ooh. because I feel that the best way to learn is by seeing the worst things mm -hmm. like the, no, the, the absolute absolutely. worst shit you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. then you can be like oh, that's what not I don't want to do, do that mm -hmm. exactly. I want to do not that and exactly. that's actually that's one of um um uh, what's a, what's a, just re retired. Uh, Mac Wellman's. Mac that's Wellman. one of Mac <laughs> Wellman's <laughs> exercises. Yeah. yeah, that's one of Mac Wellman's exercises. Is he'll tell you write a bad play. Right. Yeah. yeah. Write a bad play. Yeah. 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 Write a bad play, mm -hmm. and then so if you write a bad play, one you know what your taste is, yeah. and then two, usually when you write a bad play, it doesn't end up being as bad as you think it is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You're just breaking structure, and you you know you're expanding your mind in a way. That's interesting. That, you, and, know, and you know, as you said it, I have like a fever flashback mm. just imagining what one of my students would say mm. and say I can't write a bad play mm. you know like, ah, <laughs> oh god um, uh, oh the children that was hard I mean I actually I brought both of you to co-teach my yeah, classroom each time. that was yeah. the best that was so fun that was I mean, so good I, so, I love so that. fun um, yeah but 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 yeah, I mean, you're such a good collaborator. Me? Yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, you For are. For real. Totally. Sometimes I worry about that. You know? Oh my god, you shouldn't worry about it's that. It's like I um. I mean, especially like dealing with so many artists right now, mm -hmm. I always want to make sure that I'm giving each of them just something to work on while they're working for me and always enough time yeah. because um, being involved with so many projects at once, I feel like sometimes if I get ahead on something that I really want to write, mm -hmm. I might be neglecting someone who is waiting on something for me. You mm -hmm. know? Sure, so it, sure, sure, sure. it's very good to hear that from yeah. you guys. Oh, no, you're um, so amazing. And as a... Uh, just a comment too on, on what you're saying about you know supporting the community and just going out and uh, experiencing what other artists are doing. Yeah. It's it's hard to do that because it's exactly what you said. I mean, for me, uh, a constant struggle is that writing has become work. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just yeah. talking about this mm -hmm. that um, back when I had like a day job that I hated, right? Mm -hmm. I would come home. And be dumb excited to start writing, right? Because right? mm. it was your escape. It was my escape. I was yeah. so so pumped, and I would write longer and more passionately than I could ever imagine. Yeah. But when, like now, when I have to write a project for someone, I that has you. become Oof. the work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Speak on it. <laughs> yep. Yo, Why I'll, do they want this thing from me? Exactly. And will I be able to yeah. execute it? Exactly. <laughs> I'll find myself. Yeah, it's really bad. I'll <laughs> find myself packaging packages mm. and cutting cardboard planks to, to back books 
for the fun escape. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do. That's yeah. hard, man. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. you yeah. like start cleaning. You get really, reality. really exactly. clean. Your apartment is yeah. like exactly. shiny. I stay yeah. cooking now yeah. too. Just that. I was looking at wow. hardware stuff. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, how do you both? Yeah. How do you navigate the idea that mm. your livelihood and your career, what you do, is a creative force with? The idea that mm. it's still this magic creative force within you that you have to feed and that you have to, mm. th- that you still want to enjoy it, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. You go. I go? Yep. All you. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I found, I found myself losing the love a few years ago. Mm. Um, mm. And, it, and it's because um, I made the mistake and I took the blinders off, right? I took the horse blinders off and I started seeing who was getting produced. Oof. I started seeing who Don't was getting that. agents. Instead I just started focusing on instead you. of just focusing on me, right? <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. and then so and, and I was at a point where I was getting all kinds of opportunities, but it was like almost but not quite. Almost yeah. but not quite. And you're like, but this guy got this. Yeah, and I'm like, so I'm like, but that got produced? Mm. I'm better than that guy. Mm-hmm. Yep. You, know you know what I'm saying? Way. I know, you know, like, I'm, yeah. I'm way better than, and so it actually affected me creatively because yes. I was, you know, I wasn't doing what, how I came into the game, which was I'm going to write what it is I know about, I love about, and what I know my community needs. Yeah. And I'm, and if I get produced, fine. If I don't, whatever, but it's for me. And I think once, you know, you get to a certain age and bills and family and, it's hard to and stick stress, to that too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. competitiveness in you. Right. It's hard to not feed that. Yeah. Yeah. Too, you being know? Like, it's, it's rough. If only they had looked my way, they'd see how much better I was. Right. Sort of thing. Um, and that's so how, I had that's to, how and why I quit Suicide Girls modeling. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, so I had to let go. I had to I had to check in and, and relieve the ego of, yeah. of, of, of the burden of the ego. How do you, though? You know, like... Give me some advice, dude. Uh, (laughs) I mean, you know, where's your Zen path? What do you got? What do you got? I mean, I mean, I, I I guess the first thing that comes into my mind. I mean, you talk about the passion that you had when you had the nine to five. Yeah, dude. Right. That's still there. Mm -hmm. That love is still there. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, what it is is, is you have to check in with yourself. Like, what are the projects that I want to work on? Yeah. What are the projects that are going to feed me? Yeah. Um, and I'm not talking about feed me food wise, but what are going to feed this 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 magical yes. creative mm-hmm. energy, right? Energy. And um, I think for you specifically, Pat, you're you're a leader, mm, definitely, right? And you're a creative in the sense that, like, when you're a creative the way that you're a creative, you c- you can't really have a boss. Yeah. Mm. One probably because you're going to be smarter than the boss, mm. and you're going to be more creative than the boss because the people in that position tend not to be creatives anyway, which mm. is a crazy thing about our industry. It's facts. Right? It's, they have, it's they have no idea. 100%. They have no idea how it See works. That first, they have no yeah. idea how it works. They're not creative at all. All they're looking at is bottom line and numbers. Mm-hmm. But they're going to tell you how to create your thing. Yes. Mm. Yeah, right. And so I think always having those passion projects, right, yes. and being able to balance. All right, this is what's putting food on the table, mm. but this is the thing I'm working towards, yes. right? Yeah. And so it's 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 that thing of staying staying focused on where the end goal is. Yes. And living day to day, right? And so, um, Buddhists, um, Buddhist philosophy about suffering is either you living you're living in the past mm. or you're living in the future, mm. right? Yes. And so that's why you suffer is because either you're so thinking about all the things that. Had had been, should have been, regrets, whatever. Yeah, or you're looking to the future, here. like, oh, I I, I want to be here. How can I get here? Mm. Wanna, right. Can't Instead of just this. being exactly where you're at, mm. be where you are mm. in the moment, and just you know, when you're a kid, you don't think about that. Mm. You play, and you're on this ship, or you're you're jumping off. You know, you're, you're, there's lava, and then there's not lava. Yeah. And even kids, you'll see it. You'll see it in babies, right? So it's about going back to your childhood self. Mm. A kid falls, they cry. They're upset, they're over it, they keep it moving. Mm. We fall, we cry, and then we go, oh, I'm so I'm stupid, never gonna I can't, I, I can't walk, yeah. I can't believe, oh, I'm so stupid, so I'm the worst walker in the world, mm. I'm never gonna be right. Wow. Right, yeah. and so you have to get back to a space where it's just like, okay, I'm going to fail, mm. that's okay, because that's where I'm gonna get my success from, mm. and just keep it moving. Emotionally, okay, I'm sad right now, mm. but I won't be in a, a minute, or mm. in a month, or whatever it is. Mm. We're, we're constantly growing, we're constantly changing, but we want to hold on to this idea that I'm always going to be happy. And bringing it back to Tanya's play um, and why mm-hmm. I came on in terms of, you know, dealing with grief, right? And so 
um, there are seven stages now, but I, I stick to the five stages um, in terms of anger, depression, bargaining, um, denial, and acceptance, yeah. right? And so the acceptance part we, we kind of touched on um, is not the absence of grief. The acceptance is I am now changed and this grief will always be a part of my life. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think, and it's and, and there's no, it's cyclical. Mm -hmm. You're going to be angry. You're going to be in denial. You're mm -hmm. going to try to bargain your way out of it. You're going to be depressed. You're going to have the acceptance. Mm -hmm. It's never, it's a, you know, where I, I have the theory that we're always in grief mm -hmm. constantly. We're mm -hmm. always grieving something. Whether it's a person, whether it's the job that I got fired from, whether it's the lover that I lost, whether it's, we're always yeah. in a process of grief, right? Mm -hmm. And so where are you in your process? But know that at some point you will come to the acceptance, mm -hmm. right? And have faith in that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the hard part for a lot of people is having faith that the acceptance part and accepting the change, right? And so that you have to accept that now I am a new person. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. And especially how you, you circle back too, mm -hmm. because I feel like we're so trained, I mean, even by narrative, that we have a life, we reach conflict, and then we reach re resolution, and then mm. our story's good, you know? Mm. But Ooh. the fact mm. that we circle like back. You just keep going back. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. yeah mm. I've, I, I get mad at myself for getting mad at myself <laughs> for shit that is long gone, you know? Mm. Uh -huh. And things that I know that if I just stop thinking about, will be okay hmm. but yeah i think it's okay to have that circle back too you know mm -hmm. and it's uh, you know and, it, and i think you know especially the way that capitalism works in our society and this idea that um everybody's supposed to be happy mm -hmm. and like you still see, see billboards and you'll mm -hmm. see the social idea where everybody's smiling and everybody's happy and everybody's drinking a beer but everybody's happy that they have a pimple but everybody's yeah. happy like it's all smiling <laughs> and happy right it's true and so um <laughs> As a creative, what you do is you create joy. Mm. And joy is a, a human creation. Mm. And joy is something that you can control. Mm. You're not always going to be happy, mm. right? Yeah. And you see it at funerals, right? You'll see people laughing. Mm. You'll oh, see people yeah. reminiscing. There's yeah. laughter, mm. right? It's not that they're happy the person's gone, yeah. but that's the human creation of joy. There mm. is joy in the space mm. of reminiscing of what that person was in your life, yes. right? Um, in New Orleans, it's very clear in terms of like the line and the, and the band. In the African tradition. Right? And the African tradition, like, it's a, a celebration, celebration. Yeah. right? Homegoing. It's not that you're happy about this thing, yeah. right. but you're creating joy. Yeah. Right, and that's what and you, you celebrate the life, and you celebrate the life, right? Mm -hmm. And so the creation of joy is something that you do. Mm -hmm. People uh, get joy from reading your comic books. Yeah. People get joy from reading your plays or seeing you on stage creating a character, right? Mm -hmm. And you're creating that joy for other people and for yourself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. but that's. Yeah, I mean, so that, I'm gonna watch this part of the podcast over and over again. <laughs> I know it's yeah. very. That, that's, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. that, that's like. That, but for real. Mm. Yeah, it's like the essence of creation. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's perfect. Yeah. Because it's wow. how people want to feel, you know? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, too, like, if you're making something sad or scary, right. the catharticism of it, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a catharsis. in the end, it doesn't matter where you go. If you're super yeah. low, if mm -hmm. you're high, if mm -hmm. you're crying, if you're angry, at the end, you're like, holy shit, that was good. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like, that's absolutely. joy. Yeah, you know? that's joy. Mm -hmm. They did that for you. Mm -hmm. So I totally get that. Yeah. I I, I do feel in some ways what we create, like our stories, our plays, our comics, our, our music, you know, it, mm. it it sort of trains us for like real loss. It trains us for, for life, you know. Totally. I, I've mm -hmm. learned how, I mean, I knew what to expect in, in a surface way and in some ways a, a deeper than surface way when a parent dies because of of experiencing loss mm. through through character through TV narrative and it's movies mm. and books and mm -hmm. i think i think also though in that like there's something about being able to share your experience with other people like i i hear what you're saying i don't think that you can ever prepare for the way your loss is on your it's own personal. Mm -hmm. right yeah. but like yeah. being able to like as creatives though i think the beautiful thing and um, and like the, the important thing is being able to bring your unique story to to the world, right? Mm -hmm. Like that each of us in mm -hmm. a prism, sure, we've experienced some kind of like a loss, right? Yes. But like, mm -hmm. and that each of those losses is like absolutely like 
completely unique you mm-hmm. know like uh, Manchester by the sea like to me is a, is a really interesting because I, I grew up in Massachusetts and and yet I'm not those people in Massachusetts right like I'm mm-hmm. I, I I know them but they're not they're not me you know yeah. they're not they didn't they don't have mm. my fami- familial characteristics or anything um, but being able to bring your unique like prism your your unique light mm. and and how that light hits somebody else um, and to try to capture that, like to try to capture that, I think is, um, I think is what we're trying to do, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and it, it, with all of our, our writing is to get a little like, you know, to talk about the great Toni Morrison and her passing, like yeah. um, the way in which she, she captured character, she captured um, her own voice, you mm-hmm. know, her voice is just so, like, I don't have any playwrights that I, I really admire, but like she really changed me mm-hmm. um, yeah, you same know, here. and the way that she speaks about grief and the way that she speaks about um, African culture and 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 right. melds them right. um, the idea that we're always grieving something I think is really important mm-hmm. like uh, when we didn't um, live up to your own potential you know uh, mm-hmm. when you when you didn't um, speak in a way that was like that people could hear you mm-hmm. um, the ways in which we can't we suffer at communication mm-hmm. and how how banal it all is mm-hmm. um, and 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 yet we get up every day and, and try again mm-hmm. um, and lose the light you yeah. know on the on the mm-hmm. thing that we're trying to do mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. And, I, and that's why I love about a and B is the specificity of the story right and so um, it's a, you know it's it's a story about love it's a story about grief and it's a story of um, women of color a queer women of color yeah. right and we how how often do you see that mm-hmm. in any medium? Yeah. In, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You don't, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think speaking about Toni Morrison and and the mistake that creatives, especially young creatives, make, and even older ones, mm-hmm. is that they think that there is a universal story to be told. Mm-hmm. And in actuality, the more specific your story is, the more universal it becomes. Oh mm-hmm. hell yeah! The right? more real it is, the, yeah. the more and, genuine. And so it's even like you said, yeah. like even though you don't, you know know those Massachusetts people. Yeah, but they are. But you can connect to yeah, it because it's a yeah. specific story, yeah. right? Yes. Um, I can plug in to a space mm-hmm. and a time that, like, actually jolts me back to my high school, right? Yes. Like, in the same way that you guys have this space, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, stories about this place aren't necessarily yours, but they are um, eerily familiar, you know? And, yes. and so then, and then, like, layering that eerie fami- familiarity to... Um, I don't know, just to reveal things, mm-hmm. uh, the blood and guts of like how we, we walk through the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I 100% agree. I really, I feel that deeply too. And um, I, I was just hit with a crazy memory too, of something that I thought recently too. Like you're talking about how how these works of art become a moment in time for you. Mm-hmm. And take that to a pretty dark area. I think that's why certain artists who were known to be horrible people mm. were kind of like celebrated for a while still because people mm. thought they can't have done this mm. because if they did mm. then that memory I have mm. of that song mm. is not real. Oh my god, that's such a that's that's that sucks. You know? oh, it's, that, a, it's so pertinent to what we're going through right now in this time frame. It's such a um it's such a piece of <laughs> Evidence of how story and fiction mm-hmm. is both so powerful and also can kind of like dilute us too. You know, because yeah. mm-hmm. there are, I mean, there are movies now that I'll watch and I'll be like, I can't. I, I've loved this movie and it's been a part of me for years. Mm-hmm. And now there's a new thing that is very, very nasty that I can't not think about. Right, mm. right. And I no longer you know? have the mm-hmm. connection to it that I had. Right. Or what you're saying, like, oh, but. I can't divorce myself right. from this thing that I love, so how can I not support mm. it anymore? Yeah, yeah it's a burden and a very important moment. Oh, I mean, yeah, the, the, the Christmas story ha- has that scene at the end that now you watch and you go, oh, super raises, you know? But, <laughs> but, but, like... <laughs> but I watch that movie every but year. Uh, uh, but, I mean, it was my childhood, yeah. though. And it, <laughs> it's rough, like, I mean... Oh, God, so bad. On, on a similar topic, I just want to... Um, Thank uh, whoever the Lord is for not having Twitter when we were very young. You know, ah. like I'm so thankful. I'm gonna tell you something. Any of it, any of the internets. I, I once, and this shows you like 
how minuscule Zanga had become. Do you guys remember Zanga, I the blog? I had a Zanga. Tell you something. Oh. As a uh, S A N G A, as a starting out writer, I literally called the office of Zanga. I was like, I don't have the password anymore, but you need to get rid of that shit. You know, <laughs> I, I was posting the weirdest little like young boy memes before they were memes. I was like, if anyone sees this shit, they're gonna think I'm so crazy. <laughs> Deleted and yeah, but like. Yeah, I feel bad yeah. for this generation. I te- we both teach, yeah. and and the idea that they can focus on anything at all, you yeah. know, given yeah. all the stimuli, given that they're two years old and they know mm-hmm. how to open iPads, it's just, it's kind of. I, I mean, if if we could focus the energy on something, it would be amazing, right? Yeah. Because they actually are able to like operate things very like mm. electronics in a, yeah. in a very advanced way oh, in yeah. a very nuanced totally. way um you know so we're we are seeing like um young filmmakers making films on their phones and you know and doing yeah. things in sort of an innovative way but it's yeah. being able to like focus that energy in that way and saying yeah. all right you know in the same way that we had mm. mixtapes and and people were out on the street making hip-hop yeah. like how can that be a catalyst for that mm. and i don't necessarily see it happening as much the know? thing yeah the thing that makes me really sad and i think is really stifling is that when um as an age educator what i see now is a heightened sense of a fear of failure because mm. everything's recorded mm. right and so if you get oh, me on wow. tape yeah. the oh, yeah. world now will see me failing oh over and over and they over now want to be recorded <laughs> and so <laughs> they, they don't want to be not recorded. even at all they don't but they are at all, all times the time. yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're conscious of that yeah. right and wow. so when you're conscious of being recorded all the time there's no way yeah. that you can be your full self that's rough do you know what yeah. i'm saying it's just a rough like i'm thinking about some of the things that i used to did if it got recorded and yeah. then sent to world star sure, or sure. like oh, you're just yeah. always that you know what i'm saying then you yeah. become always that thing yeah. and that's going to creatively for creatives that's going to be so stifling because so it's like i can't make a mistake yeah that's and then also so there's rough. like there's, yeah. there's these um uh, everything going viral and so you look mm-hmm. at kids sometimes <laughs> i think about like young kids trying to um learn how to be singers or learn how to be mm-hmm. artists and mm-hmm. and then you see this like six-year-old who's like belting you know and you're like but what oh but, well yeah, you know, yeah right there's so a, there's i'm not a, as good as that six-year-old yeah there's so this competition this must, right. we had like you know um star search when we were kids right? right but that was really it and i remember with star search being like justin timberlake <laughs> you know what I mean? But now it's like everybody's Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Everybody's mm-hmm. in their in their bathrooms mm-hmm. on their foot. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, the the stakes are high. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, the competitiveness yeah. Yeah. and like the accessibility to being yeah. able to like be seen as mm. yeah. and to be famous. The other yeah. thing is the way they see fame, and the idea that they see fame from a video or mm. you know so a lot like of them a are six like, second video yeah, yeah. they'll mm-hmm. be like oh i could be youtube famous and i'm like that's not a career goal that's not famous, <laughs> famous. <laughs> yes. we're, we're gonna we're still right, that's not a skill that's not a skill you know that's so crazy to think yeah. about yeah no you're 100 percent right and it, it makes me think like what viral is now oh. is so different than what it meant when we were like first yeah. looking at the internet like yeah. i remember um there, there, there were videos that I grew up thinking were viral. Like, um, do you remember um, the unforgivable videos? Dude in the forest, um, who, who was like just yelling at the camera. Oh, I, do. I do remember. Yeah, that, actually, he said something like, um, "Can I stay at your house tonight and for two weeks straight?" Just like just an angry yeah. monologue, right? Okay. And one where there's like a uh, a pilot and he pretends to fall asleep oh. and, and his co-pilot freaks out. Those oh. videos I thought were like viral. Yeah. Yo. Going back now, looking at the view count will really shock you really? about what was viral back then mm. versus now. I can go out in the street and punch someone and fart on them, right? If someone recorded that, yeah, ten, ten million views tonight, <laughs> oh, so that'd okay? Be amazing. Million. Tonight, you know. So like, like, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not against it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like also we support it, you know. <laughs> we're, we're more seen than ever for sure. We're so yeah, we're more yeah. seen than ever. Yeah. And where I mean, where, I'm always looking for something crazy to see online, even though I I don't want to, mm. right? He but loves World Star. I, I I don't want to. You know? <laughs> I don't want to. to but I mean, I, I was actually just it's talking like about this Star last is podcast. My jam. Like my um, I swear to God, it's as so if crazy. my fingers mm. finish the website before For my mind does. Mm. Like mm. last episode was um talking about how right now I'm not watching play. any porn at all right now. Oh. I'm not watching any porn because I realized that a porn if, if I ever go to type in a website that starts with P, that oh and that R are following right after you know I, I can't mm-hmm. help it. 
my fingers go there. Mm-hmm. And same with Twitter. I need Twitter. But it Twitter. also fills it in for you. Like the, I mean, the, the, not, the, not to clear it. Oh, okay. Because no, no, the internet history. starts to like yeah. tell you. Oh, it where, starts to tell you where to go. Where yeah. things are, what yep. you need, and and it, it filters yeah. it in. As I was saying, there's a piece in the play where I comment on um, just you know how detached from the real world we are. Yeah. And we were just explaining this in rehearsal um, because uh, we're trying to figure it out. It's like, you know, because I write stuff sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, this is brilliant. Send. <laughs> <laughs> what did it? And now everyone's asking me what it means, and I'm like. It's brilliant. Yeah. Zen. Like, what are you talking about? But this one piece is about um, the internet and and how like you can't plant anymore. You can't like there's no connection to the real world, right? right? So this we're we're filtered in a way that has us very disconnected, and that disconnection um, means that nothing is real, you know. Like and que- so questioning what actually is real, and 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 then she at the end is like the only thing that is real is the love that I have. Like everything else, fuck it. We, we might be in. We might be in the Matrix. This may not be. <laughs> you know, I might be on the blue pill or whatever. But I know that this this connection that I have with this person is real. Yeah. You know, and everything mm. else could be filtered. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean that's um, that's beautiful. I think especially especially in, in, in this era, where everything seems so dire on the internet. As soon as you go in, there's everything is going on at once, and it's such a storm that I sometimes black mirror. If if, if super (laughs) is, I I often have to just think. I I have to log out and think. I'm at home. Mm. I love you. I love (laughs) my cats. You know, I could just sit here and just try to be calm for a second, Mm. and my mood will be better. But I I think that maybe someone who grew up where Twitter was already a thing, and it was already telling them how crazy Mm. everything is all at once, right? Does that person... need depressants. Antidepressants. Is that person going to be maybe able to navigate it better than us, who it came to later on, Mm. or is that going to be, to them, the real world, right? Mm. That's rough, you know? It's yeah. also a news source, you know, which I, I think is really... Ah, that's what I go to it for. Oh. Really concerning. It and, and it's something that I, could, I need to, honestly, now that I'm saying it out loud to, to this, mm-hmm. the world, um, it's like we're using it as a news source, which actually in our last election was really direly mm-hmm. Real like bad. detrimental, ter- detrimental yeah. and, and, and mm. dangerous. So mm. wh- how, in fact, are we looking at this you know, some of the articles are years old. Yeah. Some of the articles aren't even verifiable Recent. articles. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we're looking at somebody, oh, someone died. And you're like, seven years ago, yeah. you know. Oh, for <laughs> real. So, all the time. Totally. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, being able to actually time. connect outside mm-hmm. of these cultivated, um, curated spaces. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? uh, I was work. thinking about, Pat, what you said in terms of... Um, you working that nine to five and then finding the joy in the writing. Yeah. And so that's where you would get also on a biological level, that's where you were getting your dopamine fix, right? Mm. And oh, so sure. the danger of the world stars and the Facebooks and the likes and the hearts and the how many views that I get yeah. is that you're getting that dopamine fix yeah, from, from there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you're making and so story you're making, and you're telling story in these spaces, right? Mm-hmm. So you're mm-hmm. so you are making meaning Right, mm. as opposed to doing that somewhere else or making something creative somewhere mm-hmm. else. Yeah. But yeah. you're getting a fix yeah. and you're getting high. Yeah. So in terms of instant gratification right. Um, right. and what you love about theater, mm-hmm. right? If I can just go porn, mm. pub, yeah. Mm-hmm. Inst- yeah. instant gratification. Instead of I'm getting that, right there. Your, yeah, you're your brain right. is just like, oh, okay, got it. Mm-hmm. 100% right. But yeah. then you never get as high, just like any other addiction, you never get as high as that that first time yeah. and so you keep all right you well, keep oh you're look, a, you're 100 percent right you know and last so, season of black mirror yeah then. so i think sometimes <laughs> just, you just gotta deco- <laughs> detox yeah. yeah or in the case of porn up detox you know yeah. like you said yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Detox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's how people get to why, those aliens why, why. right that's oh how you my god ah, no. yo bring it back to the journey to the alien here we go and that's pre-podcast right we're talking about um do, do you want to talk about this? Do you want to <laughs> introduce to the viewers what that is? Yeah, That's on good. Vice recently, there was a video about this company. I forgot the name of the company, but I fucking looked it up, so it's in my history. I mean, we're not sponsored, though, by this company, just so you know. But we should be. We should be. I mean, hey, l- listen, alien um, guys. We'll be sponsored by you, okay? Don't we'll, fuck with me. We'll shout you don't out. Don't fuck with me. Okay. Um. <laughs> you searched all that shit since then? Yeah. God damn. What'd you search? 
This is like a very long this list. This is a very steep This was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I search it yesterday or today? I searched it yesterday. That's well, just, alien sex toys. I there searched. we go. There we go. Hard weir, hard weir. Mm. Oh, primal hard wheel splorch. Oh. Oh wow. That's a bad one right there. It's called an ovipositor. Mm-hmm. It's a dildo that you insert an alien egg into and then put it oh, in wow. yourself. And then, and then you put it in yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyways, <laughs> the point is, people get so bored. Yeah. Pornhubbin. How can I get? That they have to go further than humans. Yeah, the the, the escalation happens. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't see myself ending up there personally. <laughs> so like, I'm gonna cap like, it right Pornhub now. Pornhub you know? is basically a gateway drug gateway, to alien yeah. dildos. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to get worried. You know? Christ. Um, yes. But all right. So, um, Amy, do you have, do you have any <laughs> final questions before we wrap up? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right. Um, what, what, what I want to say is thank you both for coming on. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to shout out your social media, you know, any place that someone can go to, to support you. But first, thank you for coming on. Love you both. I want to see much more of you. I, I would love to have you back on individually as well. Yeah. And, um, yeah I, it's so great to meet you guys. Yeah. Yes. Seriously. Yeah. It, it, it's been too long since, Bye. you know, I've seen you and too long since before you met my lovely wife, okay? Mm. But, yeah, thank you for coming, and please, uh, Tanya, first talk about where people can find you and, and how to support you. Okay, so uh, Tanya.Everett and, and Instagram, and uh, Tanya Everett also on Facebook, um, also on Twitter, Tanya Everett. Um, and that's uh, E-V-E-R-E-T-T? E-T-T? Right, so first, Word. like, the last name, like a first name. Yeah. Um, and uh, the public website um, has the Weasel Festival on yes. it. Um, yeah. The, the performances are the 17th of August, the 20th, the 21st, and the 23rd, all at 7 p.m., um, at the public theater. Heck yes. yeah, we're gonna be there. Mm. So check it out on Facebook and uh, let us know if you're gonna go. Maybe we can all meet up. That'd be that fun. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And Dennis? Um, yeah. So Dennis A. Allen the second. Just Google me, bitch. And hey, hey nice. You'll find Google me in in, in, ah! in all the in all the spaces. I can't. Um, oh, I can't talk that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's better. Yo, imagine if your website was Google Me dot bitch. I would. <laughs> I would die. That's good. Actually, someone did already Amazing. done that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. But listen, all their stuff is also in the links down below. If you're super lazy. Uh, the play is called A and B. Ooh. Tanya is the writer. Dennis is the director. Mm. And mm. they are creatives in every sense of the word. Mm. Actor, writer, mm-hmm. director, producer. Mm. They do this shit, okay? Yeah. Go support them. And again, thanks for being on the podcast. Um, for anyone who wants to support us, we're on Kickstarter right now. Destiny New York Short Stories. Click it in the description down below. But most of all, if you don't support A and B... We have fucking problems. Okay? Ooh, we got ooh, some problems. Oh, I, I want to see you him. there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if it isn't on site there, it's on site later. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching or listening. If you're on the iTunes app or the podcast app or SoundCloud for the YouTubers, we love you. Thank you very much. We love you. Goodbye. Good night. That was so fun. Don't. 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 Space between.